All right, we getting back up in this constitution, y'all. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world. So welcome back to Food for Thought, and we're gonna continue with our review of the Constitution. In this video, we're gonna be looking at Article 1. Article 1 describes the legislative branch of the government, otherwise known as Congress, who can be part of it, and what these individuals can and cannot do. This article is broken down into 10 parts. This video will look at eight of those. We're gonna dig into the other two in another video. All right, let's get in this, y'all. Section 1, the vesting clause, like the wedding phrase by the powers vested in me, blah, 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 I now pronounce. The vesting clause gives Congress the powers to make laws. Section two, the House of Representatives. Now representatives, according to this section, are voted in by citizens every two years. The person running for the seat must have been a citizen of the US for at least seven years and be at least 25 years old. They also need to live in the state they wanna represent. Now the number of representatives in each state is based on population, meaning free persons, indentured servants, and three-fifths of every everyone else, you know, like slaves. They didn't count Indians who were not taxed. Section three, the Senate. Now, according to this section, each state gets two senators, regardless of the population size. Senators are voted in by the citizens of their state every six years. The person running for a Senate seat has to have been a citizen of the United States for at least nine years and be at least 30 years of age. Now you'll notice that there are some differences between senators and members of the House of Representatives. The seven year citizenship versus nine years, the 25 years versus 30 years, and the every two years versus every six years. We're gonna get into that in another video. For now, we'll just take into account that those differences do exist. Section four allows for each state to determine the how, when, and where for the elections of their members of Congress. It also orders Congress to meet at least once every year year on the first Monday in December. Winter in Philly? Really? Section 5 pretty much says that these houses of Congress can run themselves however they see fit. It does, however, order them to run and keep running. In fact, it doesn't allow for either house to adjourn for more than three days without consenting with the other. And even then, it says they have to stay close. Section six explains how members of Congress are to be paid for their services out of the US Treasury. It also gives them the power to set their pay scale. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Now this section also says that members of Congress cannot be arrested while they are in session or on their way to a session, unless it's for treason, felony, or breach of peace. Now, before you start thinking that being elected to Congress means you're free to go on a crime spree, the Supreme Court, to be covered in another video, has held that treason, felony, or breach of peace refers to offenses that contain no element of force or violence. The phrase harkens back to a time when you could be arrested in civil cases, like for owing a debt. Section six also says that a member of Congress cannot be questioned, that's in the legal sense, for anything that they might say while in session. It also prevents members of Congress from double dipping, benefiting from holding another US civil office while they're in Congress. Section seven describes the process for voting voting on bills. It gives the House of Representatives the only powers to initiate bills for the raising of revenue. It orders that all bills passed by the House of Representatives and the Senate be presented to the president, more on that office later, before becoming a law. Now the president has 10 days to either sign it or send it back. Otherwise, it defaults to becoming a law. If the president does send it back, it goes first to the house that originated the bill, along with any objections. If that house still wants to pass the bill, which means it's approved by at least two thirds, it's then sent to the other house with the objections. If it's then approved by two thirds, it becomes a law. Now, sections eight and nine deal with the specific powers of Congress. Now these get complicated, so I'm gonna look at these in my next video. So skipping ahead to section 10, this article limits the powers of the state States. It makes specific that states can't enter into treaties or alliances, they can't coin their own money, they can't keep an army or engage in war unless they're immediately under attack and have to defend themselves. It also limits states' powers in other ways, but those will make more sense when we get into our discussions of the powers of Congress. So I'll save those until then. So that's it for the discussion of Article 1 in this video. We're going to be picking up with those sections that spell out the 
specific powers of Congress in the next video. So that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love